Hello again, welcome to my channel. Today, I'll talk about fonts and all the things you need to know about them. These amazing characters convey more than just words. They carry mood, meaning, and so on. They can give your words personality. I'll start by giving you a quick history. 40,000 years back in time. Chapter 1. Ancient Inscriptions We all know about cave drawers. They're humanity's earliest form of visual communication. They're like glyphs or dingbats. Our ancestors used them to convey and record stories. Fast forward a couple thousand years, now people started to inscribe messages into tanks using cuneiform and hieroglyphics. They inscribe it on hard stones, marbles, vases, and clay. Each show told the story, and these early inscriptions laid the foundation for the diverse world of fonts we know today. Chapter 2 Manuscripts From durable, heavy, and hard to move objects, people started to figure out that paper is better. Firstly, it's very easy to carry around, and it's very durable, and it can contain a lot of information. Egypt used the papyrus, which is made from plants, and the ancient country Mesopotamia used the parchment paper, which is made from animal skin. They first wrote in scrolls, but then a couple hundred years later, they figured that the codex is better. It's like the version 1.0 of the book, which you can navigate through the pages without unscrolling. By the 5th century, most people were now using the codex instead of the scroll. These codexes were painstakingly made by hand by monks and scribes until Chapter 3, The Invention of the Printing Press Year 1440, Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press. He was a trained goldsmith and used his knowledge of metal craft to make the cast of letters for his printing press. These made him the most important person of the millennium, as he made the production of books substantially faster. The next 100 years sparked the Renaissance, wherein it was a golden age for knowledge, art, and the sciences. And not only the monks and scribes were put out of business, their handwriting style, the black letter, were incorporated to print his first books. Moving forward, as printing spread, different typefaces emerged. Entrepreneurs and innovators figured that fonts like black letter take too much space on one page. In 1470, a French named Nicholas Jensen created the first Roman typeface, resulting more text and words fitting in one page, and also quicker printing press setup times. A few years later, two Italians again wanted to make printing faster and cheaper. They made it by slanting the letters and putting the letters closer to each other that resulted in what is known today as italics. While initially used to save space, italics are now used to emphasize text. Chapter 4, Digital Typography Moving from the fast reproduction of books to computers, we have a rich history of digital type starting from DG Grotesque, which is the first digital typeface wherein it is in bitmap format and non-scalable. Then, with the improvement of computing power and screen resolutions, we started to incorporate vector fonts. Way back in the early 90s and 2000s, our computer browsers had limited font options until web-safe fonts were introduced. Then just around 2010 onwards, with the addition of smartphones and tablets, responsive fonts are now used to be dynamic and adaptable to whatever gadget we use. With fonts a part of every person's life today, it is still evolving and on a more rapid pace. We now have access to tens of thousands of font styles. And now, I'll help you understand how to choose one that can put emphasis on the mood message tone that you want to convey. Chapter 5, Practical Tips First tip is to know at least the basics of the font's anatomical parts like the terminal, bowl, stem, space, etc. Second tip, know the letter forms. It is basically the shape of a letter. Again, with the font's rich history, it has bred a lot of letter forms, which are mainly the following. Serif. This originated from the Dutch word shreef, which translates to the short lines at the end of most letters. Sans serif, wherein sans in French means without, hence without serifs. Scripts. Scripts are letters inspired by cursive or handwritten words. Decorative. Decorative are elegant or sophisticated fonts that add play or complement the overall aesthetics of a page. Glyphs. Glyphs are other forms of letters or punctuation marks. 
Lastly, thin bands, which are part of glyphs but are not letters or punctuation marks. Third tip, know the three terms, font, typeface, and typography. Here is your typeface Helvetica, and here are Helvetica's fonts. Now think about baking a cake. The typeface and the fonts are the ingredients, a specific style of a group of type characters. On the other hand, typography is the broader art of arranging the type, choosing fonts, spacing, and the overall layout to make written language visually appealing and readable. So typeface and fonts are part of typography, which is like flower is a part of making a cake. Fourth tip, denotation and connotation. It is basically putting an expression to the word. Look at these two words forward. The left is a denotation of forward, and the right is a connotation of forward. On the left, we can read it as forward, but on the right, the word feels like in itself, it is moving forward. Hence, the visual and literal meaning complementing each other, expressing an emotion. We read words, but also we read forms. So guys, there you have it. All the things you need to know about fonts to properly express the mood, meaning, and so on. And of course, please subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. So before we end, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Looks familiar when you're hunting for fonts? The sentence is a hollow alphabetic sentence or an anagram. It contains all the letters of the alphabet, perfect for you to see every letter of a font in a sentence. That's it for now. Thank you and see you on the next episode.